ABC's For Life is inspired by a man who became a lawyer and in the process got himself out of prison. I'm contributing editor Riley Chow of Gold Derby here with Nicholas Pinnock, who is the lead as Aaron Wallace. Now, you said that you were hesitant to take the role because you're unsure that it would challenge you. So I'm wondering what changed about the character in your initial discussions and how you're able to reshape the role. Well, what changed, I guess, initially was the fact that um, I had extensive conversations with Hank Steinberg and George Tillman, who were um, who uh, directed the, the pilot episode. And conversation after conversation after conversation, um, creatively, it became very, very clear to me that I was going to be challenged beyond what I thought because I had to play effectively five versions of Aaron. There was Aaron before he was incarcerated. There was Aaron the prisoner. There was Aaron the prison rep. There was Aaron the lawyer. And then there was Aaron the family man who he was with Jazz and Marie. So I was essentially code switching between these five different versions and the cadence of his speech would change and his physicality would alter slightly in his, you know, his speed in how he delivered um, anything he had to say would alter slightly. So I had to really figure out how to keep um, the thread of who he was while still keeping him authentic to who we wanted him to be. It was, uh, it was definitely a challenge for me. Now, executive producer 50 Cent has said that he really wanted you uh, for the part and had to kind of persuade you. Uh, so what did he tell you about what you were bringing to the role that really uh, resonated with him? Well, he seemed to be um, a fan of my work, and uh, namely Top Boy, um, I think is what he first saw me in. Um, and he just felt that I was, um, in his words, an actor's actor that could bring something um dynamic and meaty to the role um and you know I, I thank him so much for believing in me and i owe him um a great deal for um you know giving me this opportunity to to prove that i was more than the sum of my parts in things that i had done before because this most definitely was the the, the biggest challenge i had you know leading a show plus playing five different elements of this one character um was was definitely something that um I knew I could do, but had never previously been given the opportunity. And I'm really glad that he, uh, he believed in me, you know, that much to be able to do that. So the man that this is based on, Isaac Wright Jr., he was actually a uh, music producer, but they changed the part to a nightclub owner for you, which I thought is kind of a curious choice with the uh, involvement of 50 Cent. So do you know why they made that change? No, I don't actually. I mean, I think if if I'm not mistaken, I think there would have been there would have to have been so many life rights to be able to get around if it had been um, based on his life as opposed to inspired by his life. That uh, it would have been impossible to get every single person involved, um, and it would have taken a much longer process to do so. So that's the only thing I can think of that could have been the reason. I haven't seen uh, a lot of Isaac Wright Jr. talking about the kind of family component about the show and how that differed from his own life. So could you talk about that and uh, what you're able to bring to the performance uh, from your conversations with him? Well, I had a, um, uh, about a 50 minute conversation the first time I met him. Um, and, you know, we basically, I locked him in a room and uh, asked him, bombarded him with, you know, a hundred questions and nothing was off the table. He was happy to answer anything that I wanted to ask. Um, and he was so gracious and he was so generous and so open with his, his time and his information. Um, and he told me, you know, pretty much everything in a short space of time. And over the course of the, the filming period, you know, we spoke several times on the phone. He would come to set if I asked him to and, you know, would answer any questions. And, and as far as the family component is concerned, he did, he does have a daughter. And he did have a daughter at the time. Um, the, she, as far as I know, doesn't have a child. And um, there are certain elements that were put in place for the drama of the, the series that maybe weren't there in his life. So, you know, artistic license and, and Hank and he spoke extensively about, um, you know, 
what they could do to stretch out certain elements. I mean, his life is so rich that one story, you know, we could cover over two or three episodes. Um, so there's so much more story to tell as well, um, including the family dynamic. Can you take me back to the casting process and how you got the role in the first place? Um, <laughs> so previous to um, being cast in it, I had had meetings with um, Channing and Iowa at ABC who had um, been we'd, been, we'd been talking about the possibility of collaborating and working together and me coming to ABC to do something. So, we, you know, we just, it was all about finding the right thing. And then um, February last year, um, the script landed on my uh, laptop and I was asked to read it. I read it and um, there was just something about it. Even though I had my my trepidations about whether I was the right person for it or not, and whether whether the show was actually for me also. Um, and uh, it was basically a case of, here's a script, we would like you to play this role, would you like to play the role? And, you know, for any actor, that is nothing short of a wonderful compliment. And uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, as well as uh, 50 Cent, I thank, um, you know, the powers that be at ABC for for believing in me and, and Channing and and Io for you know pursuing me and for you know constantly keeping that the channel of communication open to find the right thing for me. So I'm um, you know thank you to to them and the ABC family. I understand that uh, whether the project is American or British, it doesn't really make a difference to you in terms of taking it. But uh, what's different in terms of actually shooting these shows, uh, American versus British television? Um, there, there are just a few things technically as far as the, the, the filming and, and uh, the crew process is concerned. In the UK, the crews are a lot smaller and we have more days to film one episode. Um, you know, we'll have anywhere between 10 and 15 days to shoot an episode, generally 12. And we'll have half the amount of crew in, in the US. Because of the unions, the crews are massive. And um, film one episode of For Life it was just eight days and that for me was the, the biggest um, change and one of the hardest challenges. Uh, have you found that you've gotten a different response from uh, any British viewers of the show? Um, no, actually the British viewers um, have loved it equally as the American viewers. I mean, I think because, because of the internet, the world is so small now that um, we live in these in these nations, we live in these countries, but we're so interconnected now that we know what's going on across the pond and they know what's going on here and we know what's going on in Australia and everything is just so, so much smaller that everyone can identify with so much more of what the world's going through because a lot of it relates to their own lives and their own communities and, you know, their own surroundings. So, um it hasn't really been much different at all um, here. It's, 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 it's had the same impact because as well as it being um, a story about this one man who's been fighting the judicial system that's been against him, that has imprisoned him unlawfully, there is a real human story there as well, which a lot of people can identify with, even if you've never been in prison, even if you know, you're fighting some other system, you can still identify with who he is. But the, um, you know, the, the, the things that Aaron goes through, it's, it's not a black problem, it's not a white problem, it's a people problem, and it's not just a US problem either, it's just happening all over the world in some degree. Um, and so uh, it's, it's, it's had a really massive impact on people here also. I think I saw that Isaac said that he still believes that the American justice system is the best in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, can we talk about that? Uh, because it, it sounds you know, uh, so surprising given uh, what he's gone through. Yeah, I mean, since um, he passed the bar and since he's been doing, you know, he was a paralegal and, you know, researching the judicial system, he would say that the U.S. legal system is the best in the world. And he stands by that 100 percent. But... What he does say is that it's the people that run it who are corrupt. 
He said there's a system of people who are not playing by the rules. And if you don't play by the rules, by a system that is just, you will have an outcome that is often unjust. And he said, that's the problem with the uh, legal system. So he believes in it himself. You know, he is now a part of the system that was against him. So he knows it from the inside out and the outside in. And he, um, he believes in it. And I, uh, you know, I trust his word. I, I, I've looked from what I have looked into. I believe it's a, you know, it's a just and fair system also. So this is obviously a very heavy part. And I found that, you know, in the show, you're very serious. We seldom see you smile. Uh, can you tell me about kind of that physicality and uh, what story you're telling through your mannerisms? Yeah. Um, so if you, that's a very, very interesting question, actually. We, I took some ideas to Hank and George um, at the beginning when we were making the pilot. Um, because I felt that the weight of Aaron's world was literally on top of him. Um, and so I worked with his, his shoulders being hunched and him trying and fighting to stand proud and be upright. So there's this constant, um, it's like two magnets, two negative ends of a magnet trying to, you know, press together, but they just won't. So he, in, from the inside, is trying to be his former self. So if you look at any flashbacks in the series, you will see that he's a lot more open with his chest and he's more upright and there's a, a pride and a sense of life. But when you see him in prison, there's that shoulder hunch. Now, I spoke to some former incarcerated um, men um, about the role and about their physicality. And one of them said that, you know, there is that sense of being able to look behind you and look out for danger. So you keep your shoulders kind of hunched and it's, it's almost a, um, uh, a poised and, and ready aggression just in case of anything. So I worked on um, certain things like that. And then because he stands very differently to me and his, his feet turn out. And I'm very, very parallel. I'm very upright with a very straight back and he's hunched over. And I think the, what I was trying to, to do with that was to, um, and I, 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 I very much like to marry the text with the physicality because they have to complement each other. So if my physicality is not in line with the text, I don't feel I'm telling the true story from its subtext right through to its surface if I'm off on that. Um, so I played with his physicality a lot. And again, so the five different versions that I spoke about earlier, there were five different um, postures and five different tones of voice also. So again, there's uh, proof to suggest that through trauma um, that people go through, it can affect some of their... Um, their mannerisms and speech patterns and senses. And um, as an actor, I work a lot as, and, and try to find out where my character is emotionally and where the tone of their voice sits with how much they've been through. And so when you realize that um, he's, he's in prison, if you, if you notice, his voice is a lot more gravelly and it has a weight to it that it doesn't have in times when we see him before he was put in prison. So, you know, but it was difficult because I had to still keep his voice the same almost, but the, the weight of it and the textures of it and the, 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 the rhythms of it had to be different to reflect who he was then and who we see him to be now. Wow. Uh, that's terrific. Uh, what about, do you see the show continuing uh, if it is able to continue uh, beyond when he gets out of prison, or do you think that's kind of the finale? No, um, in the same way that um, Isaac's life was still very interesting after he got out of jail, because if I, I don't know if 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 you know the the story of of what happened, so Isaac only became a practicing lawyer in 2017. Yeah. is for nine years previous to that, the system had tried to stop him from becoming a lawyer and passing his bar. 
Um, so there's lots of interesting things that happen. And even though Aaron's already passed his bar and he's a practicing lawyer, there is a, still a world of experience and Isaac's life away from that that he brings to the table um, that we can add to Aaron's story. So I absolutely positively um, believe that there is uh, life after jail for Aaron. And finally, switching gears a bit here, uh, do you have anything to say about series three of Marcella? No, <laughs> I have nothing to say about series three of Marcella. Okay, Nicholas, well, thanks very much for taking the time to chat. Uh, we look forward to seeing more of For Life. Uh, hopefully it comes out. And to our viewers, you can check out my interview with Hank Steinberg and other interviews with Emmy contenders and go to coldavery.com to make your Emmy predictions.